Let me see. One dimension, two dimensions, three? Huh. Maybe we could add one more for time, shall we? That's pretty much it. But what if I told you there might be a fifth dimension, and we could get access to it if we solve the mystery of dark matter? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There might be a connection between dark matter and another dimension. Now, dark matter is like an invisible force that holds the universe together. It makes up most of the matter out there and helps explain why gravity behaves as it does. Without dark matter, many things in the universe wouldn't make sense. I mean, galaxies wouldn't hold together, for example. But what makes dark matter so tricky is that it doesn't interact with the particles we can see or feel. In other words, it must have some unique properties that set it apart from regular matter. Hey, what does it matter? Okay, I'll behave. Now, some scientists believe the warped extra dimension model could explain where dark matter comes from. But to do it, we should focus on particles called fermions, the mental part of matter. These fermions might travel into the fifth dimension through something like a portal. When this happens, they could leave behind relics or remains that exist in the fifth dimension and behave like dark matter. Now, this raises a fascinating question. Could these dimension-hopping fermions be the source of dark matter we've never been able to observe? The researchers point out that the standard model of physics, the one that explains how the known particles and forces in the universe interact, doesn't include any particle that fits the description of dark matter. This alone, they say, is a strong hint that some new physics might be at play. Fermions might form what's known as a bulk mass in this warped fifth dimension. These masses could create a dark sector that acts as kind of a hidden realm where dark matter exists. This could explain why dark matter is so abundant, even though it's invisible to our traditional scientific tools. All because fermions slipping into the fifth dimension might be playing the role of dark matter. So, how do we prove this theory? Ah, uh, that is the tricky part. Many dark matter theories hit a roadblock at some point because we don't have the tools to observe this kind of matter directly. Luckily, this time, there's hope. Scientists believe advanced gravitational wave detectors, technology that's becoming pretty common, might be able to pick up the signals of this fifth-dimensional dark matter. It means the answer to the dark matter mystery might be just around the corner. We just need to use the right tools. Now, on the other hand, fermions and dark matter might not be our only chance to find other dimensions. The answer might be hidden in just two words – black holes. Scattered across the universe, they're cosmic phenomena that consume gas, dust, light, and even other black holes. Anything that crosses the event horizon, also known as the point of no return, is pulled inward and compressed to extreme levels. This creates what physicists call a singularity. It's a point where the known laws of physics break down. Singularities are kind of cool. They're like high school rule breakers messing with theories about how the universe works. But then, in 2010, theoretical physicist Nikodem Polovsky proposed an alternative idea. Instead of containing a singularity, the center of a black hole might house a passage to another universe. And isn't this idea even more mind-boggling? If this is the case, our universe itself could have originated from a black hole in a different universe. Ooh, there goes my mind. At the center of Poplovsky's idea is the concept of torsion. It acts as a force affecting matter in the universe, much like gravity. The theory suggests that instead of ending in a singularity, the interior of a black hole could lead to a wormhole, also known as an Einstein-Rosen bridge. This bridge would connect to a white hole, which behaves as the opposite of a black hole. I mean, it emits matter and light instead of consuming them. Now, the idea of white holes first saw the light of day in the mid-20th century, but researchers didn't have the proper tools to explain their behavior. Well, here comes torsion. It could, hypothetically, prevent singularities from forming. According to the theory, the system of black holes, wormholes, and white holes might explain how matter in our universe came into existence. During the collapse of a black hole's parent universe, torsion could have stopped the formation of a singularity. Instead, the matter inside the black hole could have created new space, and it could have resulted in the formation of our universe. This process aligns with an alternative to the Big Bang called the Big Bounce. Clever, huh? 
According to this big bounce, there are tons of universes contracting and expanding over time. In this scenario, matter from the parent universe flowed through the wormhole and into our universe, triggering a chain reaction that created even more matter. This event led to the universe's rapid expansion. Sadly, the wormhole is a one-way passage, meaning it would be impossible to travel back to the parent universe. Now, proving this theory remains a challenge. It's true that the idea of torsion doesn't go against particular physical theories. But there still is no direct observational evidence of its existence. Torsion might only exist under extreme gravitational conditions, such as those near black holes, which remain difficult to observe with current technology. Now, we've been talking about a few other dimensions, like 5, yeah? Forget it. How about 11? In 2017, neuroscientists use a classic branch of mathematics in a completely new way to explore the structure of the brain. And what they discovered was truly extraordinary. The brain, yes, your brain, contains multi-dimensional geometric shapes that function in up to 11 dimensions. This discovery is likely to be a serious step towards understanding the brain, the most intricate structure we know. We're used to viewing the world in three dimensions, but the brain might work differently. The research was carried out by scientists from the Blue Brain Project, a Swiss initiative focused on creating a supercomputer-powered simulation of the mouse brain. In their study, the team used algebraic topology <laughs> that's another $10 bright side phrase, meaning a mathematical field that explores the properties of objects and spaces regardless of their shape or size changes. They found that neurons in the brain form groups called cliques. The size of a clique, based on the number of neurons it has, determines its dimensionality as a geometric shape. Now, this doesn't mean physical dimensions like the three we experience, but instead reflects the connections and relationships within the brain's network. The researchers identified tens of millions of these structures in small sections of brain tissue. Most were up to seven dimensions, but some reached as high as 11 dimensions. Well, this was a discovery they hadn't anticipated. The human brain has around 86 billion neurons, each with countless connections, forming a massive, intricate network. With such complexity, it's not surprising that we still don't fully understand how this network operates. So, to test their framework, the researchers used a 2015 model of the neocortex, an area of the brain associated with higher-order functions like sensory perception and cognition. They also tested their approach on actual rat brain tissue, confirming the results. Let's discuss the findings of the study in simple terms, please. The researchers examined the brain in two ways – by zooming in on individual neurons and by looking at the bigger picture of how everything connects. They discovered groups of neurons that are super-connected – they're called cliques, as I said – and empty spaces between them, also known as cavities. And these cavities seem to be really important for how the brain works. When they tested their brain model, the neurons reacted in a very organized way. It was like the brain was building shapes step by step, from simple lines to flat planks, then cubes, and even more complex 3D shapes, going all the way up to 11 dimensions. Then it would break them down again. This process of building and breaking shapes seems to be how the brain responds to things, but scientists still don't know exactly why it happened so precisely. They think this is a new way to understand how the brain works. But there's still a lot to learn about these patterns and what they mean for the brain as a whole. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.